We're back with another 107 facts video for you. If you haven't seen our previous video, click here to check it out. For those of you who are up to date on everything miraculous and cannot wait for the finale of this exciting season, here's another 107 facts about miraculous tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir for you in the meantime. Number 1. Did you know that the show's title, Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, is only primarily used in countries in Europe and in the US? Other countries promote the series under the shortened title Miraculous Ladybug, but most times you'll hear people referring to it with just the name Miraculous. Why the difference in titles? Apparently this is because the show wanted to appeal to girls and boys, and to show that Cat Noir is as much a main character as Ladybug. However, the show's creator Toma Astruc stated that the series is meant to be a girls show and is meant to empower its female viewers in particular. Number 2. Speaking of Toma Astruc, in the first season of the show he was primarily acting as the director, but with the start of season 2 he also has writing credits in the show. You will also see him fill in the shoes of writer and director behind the specials. Number 3. With the introduction of the Miraculous World movie series, the series has been expanding its world building outside of the show's central location in Paris. The first special to be released was Miraculous World New York United Heroes, which introduced old and new superheroes from New York. In the second special, called Shanghai The Legend of Lady Dragon, we learn about Marinette's heritage in China and about another magical jewel, the Prodigious. This special loosely takes place between the events of the show's second and third season, whereas the events in New York are to be located in between seasons 3 and 4. Number 4. According to Astruc, these movie specials are part of the canon and follow their own overarching plot thread. This is supported by the fact that a character named Cash, who was introduced in the Shanghai special, makes an unexplained appearance at the end of the New York special. Number 5. Remember when we told you about the Quantic Universe and how Ladybug is what Spider-Man is to the Marvelverse? While both Ladybug and Cat Noir started out as a duo, by the time the show aired its second season, Ladybug began growing her own team of superhero allies to call upon and meeting new ones outside of Paris. Number 6. The Kwamis and the Miraculous are only a small part of this quantic universe. By now we know about the team of superheroes in New York and the prodigious and renlings in Shanghai, all of whom have their own unique powers. Number 7. The next specials will take place in Rio de Janeiro, London, Africa, and Japan, which will introduce us to Lady Butterfly, Miss Rose, and Lady Lion. Number 8. You didn't hear it from us, but we heard that there are some spin-offs in the works. Number 9. In the episode Time Tagger, we have been given hints towards the future, including enemies like Dr. Sadness, Pains and Tears, who are also known as the Twin Queens of the Inner Dimension, and Majestia's evil sister, Ignoblia. Number 10. And from the looks of it, we may already know who is going to become the new Hawk Moth. Number 11. Ladybug is the new guardian of the Miracle Box since Master Fu renounced his position and lost his memories at the end of Season 3. Number 12. Despite this, when Marinette is not around, the Snake Kwame Sass acts as a substitute leader of the Kwamis and can give the other Kwamis permission for action if the situation calls for it, as was seen in Dearest Family. Number 13. It's no secret that show creator Toma Astruc likes to build in references to popular comic book heroes. So it makes perfect sense for the new team of heroes in New York to be based off of or inspired by iconic figures like Captain America, Batman, and Superman, just to name a few. Number 14. If you're just as much of a superhero fan as Alia, you might not be so surprised to hear that we've known about Majestia since the episode Ladybug and Cat Noir, Origins Part 1. In fact, Majestia makes another brief appearance in the show's third season. She's seen alongside Sparrow in Mr. Damocles' office in the episode Dark Owl. Number 15. If you've been keeping up with all these superhero references, you could probably tell that Mr. Damocles' alter ego, the Owl, is inspired by fellow superhero Night Owl. Number 16. The episode Dark Owl also includes heavy references to the early 2000 animated Batman series. Both heroes have their own theme motif and a spinning logo. The Owl's assistant, a computer named Albert, is a parody of Bruce Wayne's loyal assistant Alfred. To make matters a tad more interesting, the DC Universe has an Owl-themed hero named Owlman, who could have been another source of inspiration for the Owl. Number 17. Back in our previous video, we told you about the series' origins in the comic and anime sphere. For those of you who'd still like to find out what that could have looked like, well, good news. Miraculous recently returned to its manga roots with its own manga series, which is available in comic book stores in Japan and online. As of right now, the first issue covers the events in Season 1, but there's more on the way. Number 18. Not only that, but it's been confirmed by executive producer Jeremy Zag that the series will be getting its own theme park in China. Number 19. 
Throughout the series, Marinette's name is often altered into Marino for comedic purposes. The first time this happens is when Marinette disguises herself in the Season 3 episode Party Crasher, and is later seen again on Mark and Nathaniel's comic book cover in the episode Gabriel Agreste. The cover also bears a resemblance to the Mini Menace covers, which were a series of fake comic covers that served as concept art for the show drawn by Thomas Astruc. Number 20. Ever wonder why the power of the Black Cat Miraculous is destroying things? On first sight, this might be an odd power to have for someone whose miraculous is based on bad luck. But according to Thomas Astruc, there's more to the cataclysm than what is seen in the show. Based on his explanation, it appears that the cataclysm's level of power is more versatile and multifaceted than what first meets the eye. 21. Considering Plague is the harbinger of bad luck, it shouldn't be a surprise to us that he has caused huge catastrophes in the past. Plague is responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs and dragons, the disappearance of Atlantis, and the leading tower of Pisa. That is quite the track record for this small flying creature. Number 22. We later learn that Plague is not an individual case, and that each Kwame's power leads to catastrophes if they're used without a wielder to control their powers. Number 23. We're sad to tell you that the famous monster of Loch Ness is indeed an illusion created by our lovable tricks. Number 24. You would think that this would make it very easy to discover Kwamis when they're around. In the episode Kwame Buster, Miss Mendelev tries to catch Plague and Tiki by recording them on camera. We appreciate the effort, but maybe someone should have told her that Kwamis cannot be detected by electronic devices. Number 25. It is undeniable that Ladybug and Cat Noir's biggest advantage to ironically staying unmasked is the magic fabric of their superhero suits which prevent others from recognizing them. Even though it's blindingly obvious to the audience and having even Alia make comparisons between Adrian and his persona in the show, nobody seems to connect the dots. Why? Is magic really the answer to that? Well, later Toma Astruc followed up by saying that Transform Miraculous users are protected by quantum masking. But as evidenced by Alia's keen eye for detail when it came to figuring out the true identity of Carapace, it doesn't always apply. Number 26. And while we're at it, here's another fun fact about the superhero suits. According to Plague, the suit of a Miraculous holder is based on the person's innermost wish. Even though he's not a fan of Cat Noir's Belle, we know that it was Adrian's wish. If you're wondering about Marinette, according to Thomas Astruc, the reason for the simplicity of Ladybug's suit is that she wasn't ready to become a hero. Interestingly, the suit's design is not fixed. In the episode Rocketeer, it was revealed that Alia's superhero suit changed colors twice after abandoning her role as Rena Rogue to become the new Rena Furtive. Number 27. While we're on the topic, Season 2 introduced new power-ups, which enable Miraculous users to use their powers in different environments. Thanks to secret potions, a Kwame's abilities and physical appearance can be altered. As of now, only three of the seven power-ups have been introduced in the show. The first power-up to be introduced was the Aqua Power, which grants underwater abilities like breathing and swimming faster. The Ice Power-up grants ice-related powers, which you can use to navigate on icy terrain. The third, and by far coolest, is the Space Power-up, which allows the Miraculous Wielder to fly via jetpack, which includes long distances like to outer space. Number 28. In Season 4, Ladybug's suit and power of Lucky Charm got a significant update. Thanks to Alia's help, Marinette is now able to create her own magical charms that protect Akuma victims from being re -akumatized. Plus, this new power comes with an upgraded suit which appears whenever Ladybug uses her lucky charm. Number 29. However, Cat Noir did not get an update for his suit nor for his powers. Number 30. But the heroes are not the only ones with new powers and new designs. Since Hawk Moth was able to repair the Peacock Miraculous at the end of Season 3, he is now able to combine it with the Butterfly Miraculous and use both of the powers at once. Now called Shadow Moth, his new design reflects this change, but don't worry, his on-theme monologues haven't changed. Considering how often he and Cat Noir like to make puns, you'd think people would have figured out by now that they're related. Number 31. Ironically enough, none other than Ladybug was the one to connect the dots in the first episode of Season 2 in which it is revealed that Adrian's father, Gabriel Agreste, is Hawk Moth. Marinette and Ladybug are seen pointing out similarities and hints between her arch nemesis and the secretive fashion designer, the biggest of which is the Agreste brand's butterfly-shaped logo, which appears on Gabriel's products and even in his own home. However, because it was possible for him to akumatize himself to throw up all suspicion, Ladybug and Cat Noir still have to discover Hawk Moth's identity as of yet. Number 32. Meanwhile, both Alia and Luca have learned of Marinette's alter ego as Ladybug in Season 4. Marinette trusted Alia with her secret in the episode Gang of Secrets, and Luca discovered the truth in Wishmaker. Number 33. 
Unbeknownst to Marinette, Luca also discovered Cat Noir's identity, making Luca the only person who knows both of their identities aside from Bunnix. But hey, no pressure. Number 34. If you look closely, some episodes have an alteration of the Zag Company logo featured in background shots. Number 35. As some fans have pointed out, in the New York special you can spot the license plate of the Surugi family on the car that Hawk Moth drives in. Coincidence? We don't think so. While we haven't seen much between the partnership of the Agrests and Surugis, the end of the Season 3 episode Feast gave us a suspicious sequence of the mean-spirited adults curiously following the news of the resurrected temple in the Guardians in Tibet. Perhaps there's more to the adults than we first thought. Number 36. Did you know that in the initial concept phase, Adrian was intended to use a crutch? The idea was eventually turned down by networks over concerns of potentially misrepresenting people with disabilities. The crutch later became Cat Noir's staff. Number 37. Spooky Theory Time Ever since the introduction of the Peacock Miraculous and the power of a Mox which can create Senta Monsters, it has been speculated that Adrian could be a Senta Monster, who was either created by his father or by the last Peacock Wielder, his mother Emily. There are a lot of clues that point towards this theory being possibly correct, but have a look yourselves and tell us what you think. Number 38. Clue number one, this is potentially the biggest brow raiser. Emily's portrait bears a strong resemblance to a piece by the artist Gustav Klimt, who created a famous portrait of Adele Bloch, also known as the Woman in Gold. The painting depicts a woman who was unable to have children. Considering how concerned Gabriel is seen in regards to his son's safety and the implication that both of Adrian's parents sheltered him in isolation even prior to Emily's passing, this could be strong evidence that Adrian may not be their son by blood. Number 39. With the introduction of Felix and his mother Emily, Emily's twin, the senti Adrian theory got more fodder. It only takes a single look to immediately recognize the identical appearance of Adrian and his cousin Felix. While Felix's design could have just come down to arbitrary character design choice, it's still an odd decision to have him be Adrian's cousin and not a sibling. So of course, the theory immediately suggesting itself is that Adrian was based on his cousin when Emily created her child with the help of the peacock. Sound like a stretch? We got one more for you. Number 40. The twin rings from the Graham de Vanelli family have a bigger role than we were led to believe initially. While this could be a clever red herring by the writers, if you've been paying attention throughout the most recent season, you'll probably have noticed Gabriel's frequently fiddling with his ring. Interestingly, you'd see this action whenever Gabriel encounters resistance from Adrian in dialogue, who gives in right whenever the ring comes into play. The strongest hint towards a connection between Adrian and the ring so far has been given to us in Ephemeral. Upon contact with the Akuma, Adrian is seen resisting his father's order of handing over his miraculous, but relents once Gabriel turns his ring on his finger. Number 41. As explained in our previous video, usually writing an episode takes a couple of months. According to Thomas Astruc, however, it took the writers a whole year to write Cat Blanc. Number 42. The script of the season 4 episode sent to Bubbler was originally 60 minutes long. Number 43. In the same episode, it's revealed that Marinette is afraid of tarantulas. This makes sense because she's the wielder of the Ladybug Miraculous. And now you may take a good guess at which animal is the natural predator of ladybugs. Number 44. According to canon, Marinette is the most well-behaved child in the world and number one on Santa's list of good kids. I wonder where Adrian's name is on the list. Number 45. Marc Anciel's name is a play on the French word arc-en-ciel, which translates to rainbow in English. The word play both references his multicolored outfit and his being part of the LGBTQ community. Number 46. As confirmed via Astruc on his official Twitter page, Alex is aromantic and Max is asexual. Number 47. As revealed in the episode Cat Blanc, Adrian's fifth name is Athanasi. Number 48. Chloe's last name Bourgeois is a French term that is used to describe a member of the upper class within France. This is in line with Chloe's mean-spirited characterization, as she is often seen looking down upon people of a lesser status. In the episode Darkblade, we learn of the antagonistic history between the Bourgeois family and the Dargan court family, which is still prevalent. Number 49. Adrian's name, Agrest, means rural in French. It is also the French name for the grayling butterfly which makes this very fitting for his father's alter ego. Number 50. Did you know that Adrian's worst grade was an A- in maths? Number 51. According to Master Fu, Marinette is the first person in history to be able to mentally and physically handle wearing 16 miraculouses at once. Number 52. 
The picture of Emily Agreste as seen on Adrian's computer is based on an actual photo of Tara Strong, who is a prominent voice actress on whom Emily's design is based. Number 53. In Heart Hunter, Adrian mentions that he's never seen Marinette with her hair down. This episode comes after Cat Blanc, in which the alternate version of Marinette was seen wearing her hair down in a different timeline. Number 54. Marinette's favorite song is the song that she danced to with Adrian at Chloe's party and in New York. At the same time, Nino is said to hate this song. Number 55. For all the musical fans watching, you'll be happy to learn that there's an animated musical movie titled Ladybug and Cat Noir Awakening on the way. The musical is a reimagining of the show's first season led by the executive producer and head behind the Zag company, Jeremy Zag. Number 56. The producers initially teamed up with the movie production company Lionsgate to produce a live action movie, but it was later canceled in favor of the musical. Number 57. Both Adrian and Marinette are said to be the respective Kwame's favorite holders. Number 58. Almost all of the episodes are named after the villains Hawk Moth creates in them, the only exception of this being the episode Felix. Number 59. Marinette's childhood dream was to be the knitting fairy. Number 60. Prior to becoming mayor, Andre's dream was to become a film director. He even directed a film called Solitude, which starred none other than Emily Agreste. Number 61. Watch out, Doctor Who fans. Alia has a TARDIS in her room. Maybe she'll someday use it to travel in time and uncover juicy stories to post about on her blog. Number 62. At this point in time, Mr. Pigeon has been akumatized 72 times, and with that, he is definitely the record holder for most akumatizations. We love the commitment. Number 63. Looks like he'll make the switch to rats though, as is implied at the end of Time Tiger. Let's hope he'll have more success than with pigeons. Number 64. Chloe was officially the first person to withstand Hawk Moth's hold. This was later followed up by Alia and Nino in Season 4. Number 65. The Amok in the episode Haxon is inspired by the logo of the French animated show Code Lyoko, which Thomas Astruc worked on. Number 66. With the episode Crocodile, it was revealed that Julika and Luca are twins which was something that fans were wondering about for a long time because before the confirmation, many thought Luca would be the older by two years. Number 67. In truth, we finally got the confirmation that rock-legged Jagged Stone is the father of Luca and Julica, something that was hinted towards in Desperada. Comparing him and his children makes the family resemblance way too obvious, if you ask us. Number 68. Christina V, who is Marinette's voice actress in the English dub, was the design inspiration for Barbara Keynes, who is Night Owl. Number 69. In some episodes, director and show creator Thomas Astruc makes a cameo as himself, and he also voices himself in the French dub. That's what we call self-immersion. Number 70. The series also featured other known figures like fellow animation creators Dana Terrace, who is the creator of The Owl House, and Alex Hirsch, who created Gravity Falls. Both of them make an appearance in the New York special and are seen taking a selfie with Alex. Number 71. Actress and singer Laura Marano, who is mostly known as Ali from Disney's Austin and Ali, recorded an alternate theme song for the show and later even had her own episode with Frightening Gale. Number 72. The ending of Wishmaker makes an allusion to the American reality competition series RuPaul's Drag Race. Moderator Alec is seen wearing a wig and a shiny costume, which is reminiscent of RuPaul's appearance. He also uses a similar quote, which is announced at the end of every Drag Race episode. Number 73. And because we just can't get enough of suits, according to Cat Noir in the episode Ladybug, the suits of the superheroes make them nearly invincible. Number 74. To satisfy your Ladybug Spider-Man crossover dreams, in the same episode you can hear Senta Ladybug telling Cat Noir the sentence, I don't feel so good, which may or may not be a direct reference to the same line said by Tom Holland's Peter Parker to Iron Man in the movie Avengers Infinity War. Number 75. With season 4, the show's intro got new intro music. And with the introduction of new characters, the intro was updated visually too. But before we got the original intro that we love today, there was an alternative theme song written and performed by Andy Marsh, named Here Comes Ladybug. The song has a different and more grounded tone and greatly contrasts the upbeat version that was chosen instead. Number 76. Each season introduces new locations in Paris. However, the show's geography is not always completely accurate. Some locations, like the Eiffel Tower, are illogical to ensure the characters move around easily from point A to B. Number 77. Some real places that are shown throughout the series are the Ile aux Signes, the Louvre Museum, the Canal Saint-Martin, the Champs-Élysées, the Arc de Triomphe, and the Notre Dame. 
Number 78. Because the show is not allowed to include allusions to religion, the Monument of Notre Dame is shown without its eye-catching gargoyle statues. Number 79. Did you know that the Dupan Chang's Bakery is actually another place that exists in real life? Its real counterpart is the Boulangerie Boris du Moulin de la Galette, which is now addressed as Boris Lume Boulangerie. Number 80. The Collège François Dupont is another location that you can find in Paris, however with a slightly different name. The school is based on the Lycée Carnot, which has quite the reputable list of alumni which includes big figures like the music duo Daft Punk and known French philosopher Guy Deleuze. In the show, Thomas Astruc is an alumnus himself. Number 81. And if that's not enough already, Astruc likes to sneak in every now and then to leave his mark. If you look closely into Master Fu's grimoire, one entry names Thomas Astruc as a past Ladybug Miraculous holder. Number 82. Before Master Fu, a man named Su Han preceded him as the Celestial Guardian. The training of Celestial Guardians includes a technique called Mirakung Fu, which enables them to overpower rogue Miraculous holders. Number 83. The show's main characters have official Instagram accounts which fans could interact with. However, the accounts have sadly become inactive. Characters with an account include Marinette, Adrian, Chloe, and Alia. Number 84. Fun fact. If you take a look at Marinette's list of followers, you will see a certain blonde-haired girl missing. Number 85. If you love Chibi, you can watch the official Chibi shorts on the Miraculous YouTube channel. Number 86. There's actually three web series in total. The other two are called Miraculous Secrets and Miraculous Tales from Paris, which serve as small interlude chapters going deeper into the series and the characters' lives. Number 87. Throughout the show, Marinette is seen several times driving a car or a motorcycle, which is something she may have picked up from her grandmother, Gina, who is a motorcyclist. It comes as no surprise, then, that in Dearest Family, Marinette is finally gifted a motorcycle from her grandmother. Though, for her own safety, Marinette asked for a moped to use until the age of 18. Number 88. Cat Noir's improvised tune towards the end of Ephemeral is a reference to the theme heard in the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. We can't blame you, Cat Noir, it is a very catchy tune. Number 89. Even though the mutual identity reveal of Ladybug and Cat Noir is probably very high on the list of things that viewers want to see, a running gag in the show is the unnamed hamster which often comes up whenever Marinette's dreams for the future are referenced. And in the episode Frozer, it's revealed that Adrian is dreaming of having a pet hamster as well. Number 90. In case you were wondering, Mr. Banana's childhood dream was to be a cucumber. Number 91. The show has quite a few rosters when it comes to voice actors, at least when it comes to the English dub. Nino and Max, who were both voiced by Ben Diskin in the first three seasons, got a replacement with Zeno Robinson, beginning with Miraculous World New York. Number 92. Ben Diskin is still heard voicing a bunch of other characters like Nuru, Sass, XY, and Chloe's butler, Jean, Picasso. Number 93. Sabine and Miss Mendelev received a new voice actress in Season 4 upon the passing of the late Felice Sampler, and will be voiced by Anne Yatko. Number 94, the frequently seen artist Theo has two different voice actors. In Season 1, he was voiced by Brian Beacock, however in the second season he was voiced by Ezra Weiss, who is the show's dubbing director. Number 95, Bryce Pappenbrook, who voices Adrian and his cousin Felix, also voiced Mr. Banana in the show's first three seasons. The character later got voiced by the previously mentioned Ezra Weiss from season four onwards. Number 96. Another major character who switched voices is Julica, who was voiced by Aaron Fitzgerald up to season two. Reba Boer took over in the following seasons. However, considering Julica's mostly quiet appearances, we'll let this one slide in case you weren't aware of it before. Number 97. In Ikari Gozen, it's revealed that Kagami's Chinese zodiac sign is the dragon, which is fitting because she is the wielder of the dragon miraculous. Number 98. Marinette's zodiac is the snake. Number 99. The series eventually introduced more family members in Marinette's family, and it's revealed that Marinette is French-Italian through her father's side and Chinese through her mother's family. Number 100. The show recently celebrated its 100th episode with the release of Ephemeral. If you listen closely, the number 100 is dropped 8 times within the episode because, you know, they really wanted to make sure you know that it's the 100th episode. Number 101. Currently, there are 7 seasons planned total for the main series, which production on season 5 and 6 already underway. But with the huge success that the series has had worldwide, it'll be no surprise if there's more on the way. Number 102. Future plans also include another theatrical movie release in the upcoming 5 years, though we don't know if it'll be a sequel to the musical or something different. Number 103. 
Marinette is the fifth person of Chinese origin to wield the Ladybug Miraculous. Number 104. Early designs of the Quantic Kids were reused for some of the superheroes in New York. Number 105. Miraculous has its own Roblox server which you can join for free to play online with other players from around the world. Number 106. The episode Where Dad is a tribute to fairy tales and has elements that are similar to the story of the Beauty and the Beast. The episode is also meant to put a spin on the Boy Saves Girl story trope by having Marinette rescue herself. Number 107. Last but not least, here's fact number 107. Creator Toma Astruc has confirmed that the current main storyline will be resolved by the end of season 5, but with at least two more seasons to go, this opens up the question of what else is in store for us. What are your theories? Did you enjoy our list? What fact do you think we missed, and what are you most excited for in the coming months? Let us know in the comments section. While you're there, like and subscribe to see more great videos every week. And remember, Fred Raider loves you!